I'm doing this short live conversation with you guys because I received a question from somebody about parents and it got me thinking. Um, the things I'm going to say might sound a little bit controversial. I pray that you don't take them in the wrong way, even though I know it's social media and the chances of that are very, very high. But I'm going to try to explain some things uh, to the best of my ability. I think, first of all, Allah has told us to take care of our parents to the best of our ability and do ihsan to them, right? Especially when they reach old age. So for Muslims, taking care of our elderly parents is actually one of the best things we can do as believers. It's almost like our ticket to Jannah is in taking care of our older parents. That premise is not being denied in what I'm about to say. And I'm not going to contradict that truth, but I, I have to caveat that with something else. So what happens is in our cultures, um, uh, especially in South Asian culture, um, we have this unique relationship with our parents. Um, and this relationship is similar in Hindu families, Sikh families, uh, Muslim families. It's not even an Islam thing. It's a South Asian thing from what I can tell. Um, and that is that, you know, in most cultures, like, for example, if you take myself, I, I wasn't raised in you know, the, the sub subcontinent culture, for instance, right? So one of the things that I don't want for myself as I get older is I, it's a nightmare situation for me that one day I'll be dependent on my children. I want to stay as independent as I possibly can. The Prophet Sallallahu asked for um, a refuge from old age, right? And 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 uh, there's a saying in Arabic, rajul عن الناس, right? So like the dignity of a person is for them to be independent of others. Um, and I would find it a very humiliating, debilitating situation where may Allah protect you and me from it, that we get to an old age and we have to depend on our kids for them to provide for us, for them to take care of us, for them to pay the rent and pay the you know bills, etc. And so people live their lives to and, and save money and are financially responsible and they get to a point where they can be independent and they actually want to support their children. They want to put their children through school and make sure they their daughter gets married and all of that stuff, right? But in our culture, in South Asian cultures, there's this interesting thing that for a lot of parents, there's it's become common now to do bad financial planning, to not have any savings, to actually consider your son or your daughter your retirement plan. And, um, you know, even if they get married, you, you just decide that you're just going to, whatever money you saved as a parent, and whatever home you got, that's going to go to your cousins and your brothers and your uncles. And you're going to become super generous to everybody else because your son or your daughter is going to pay for everything for you. Because Islam says you have to be the best to your parents, right? And then a lot of times parents like that, they become really generous to everybody else in the family, not from their own money, from their children's earnings, from their son's earnings or from their daughter's earnings. And they create this kind of financial chaos in the family. And when the son or the daughter is not able to do that, they're not able to take care of their parents full time or they're not able to you know, pay their all of their expenses and then take care of their own expenses because they're, they can only earn so much money and they have a household to take care of. Then the guilt tripping starts that you're you know, you're not taking care of your, your, your family. You're not taking care of your parents. Um, when it comes to the needs of our parents, their health care needs and extraneous circumstances, you know, there's a surgery, somebody uh, had a heart attack or they've got diagnosed with diabetes or they need medical care and all that stuff. Of course, we're going to be first in line to take care of our parents. But when it comes to like them turning and as a culture, as a culture, turning their children into a financial cushion and then even for luxury items and for frivolous expenses oh your your cousin's getting married or your your sister's having a, a party you need to pay for this or that or the other and then the commentary starts oh you have money to give your wife but you don't have money to give your give your your sister huh or you have money to give your and then even women that are married are being guilted by their parents to go back and contribute as if they're not good daughters by getting married right and you know what happened classically women got married and they moved to different villages they move to different lands and they never felt guilty that they're not taking care of their parents because that wasn't part of the the equation. So we we created this new equation in which there's an overstress on servitude to parents, even when servitude isn't needed. It's um, it's actually oppressive. To be honest with you, the, the, the word for that is actually it's oppressive and it's breaking families. It's, you know, marriages are breaking. 
and sons and daughters are feeling like my dad or my mom, they're more concerned about taking care of the luxury needs of their family, their parents, than even their own children, right? And so our, our, and, and the deen, the religion is misused and hijacked to justify that kind of nonsense. And that is nonsense. Um, I will have feel for myself personally, and I would recommend this for all of you, I would feel it the honor of my life to take care of every need my parents could ever have. And I would want to take care of it before they ask, right? I would, I would want to do that before they even ask. But at the same time, I'm not going to sit by and, and think that somehow Islam gave a blank check to parents to engage in any kind of financial abuse of their children and guilt them in the name of Islam uh, and, and do that and perpetuate that so that they end up, those sons and daughters, they end up being oppressors to their own spouses. They become oppressors to their own children in the name of serving their parents, you know. So let's be more aware of, of what our deen actually says about these kinds of circumstances. And let's be aware of the kind of programming that has been done in many cultures where you're just, it's, you know, I know family, grown men, they don't even see their own paycheck. They deposit it into their dad's account or their mom's account. And they, the, their wife has never seen what they earn or this is ridiculous. That is not Islam. That somebody, somebody sold that, that is not Islam. That is not this religion. That is a, uh, a kind of hostage situation that needs to be called out for what it is. And so I pray that we are the best to our parents. And we, I also pray that in the name of being the best to our parents, we don't allow for financial and psychological and social abuse to carry on. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum.